Welcome to a video demonstration for the hands-on activity, Orders of Magnitude. My name is Pete Rayner. I'm a faculty member in the University of Minnesota School of Public Health in the Division of Environmental Health Sciences. I created this activity together with Austin Bell, who is a student and research assistant at the University of Minnesota. The activity is part of the nanotechnology health and safety training created by the Midwest Emerging Technologies Public Health and Safety Training Program, or METPAS program, which is a collaboration of the University of Minnesota, the University of Iowa, and Dakota County Technical College. The METFAST program is funded by a grant from the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. The content of this video is solely our responsibility and does not necessarily represent the views of the National Institutes of Health. We gratefully acknowledge the students in the Nanoscience Technology program at DCTC for their help in evaluating and improving this activity. The first part of the Orders of Magnitude activity is an instructor-led activity to help students understand what an order of magnitude is. The first step in the instructor-led activity is to measure the diameter of a small object like a golf ball. Here we use vernier calipers to measure a golf ball's diameter. If you don't know how to use vernier calipers, you can view one of many YouTube videos that will show you. The main scale on the calipers reads 1 and 5 8 inches, while the vernier scale reads 7 1 28 of an inch. Thus, the diameter of the golf ball is 1 and 5 8 inches plus 7 1 28 of an inch, which equals 1 and 87 1 28 inches, or about 1.68 inches. To calculate the size one order of magnitude larger than the golf ball's diameter, we multiply the diameter by 10 to the first power, which is just 10, which equals 1.68 inches times 10, or 16.8 inches. To show how long 16.8 inches are, you can extend the tape measure like we show here. To calculate the size two orders of magnitude larger than the golf ball's diameter, we multiply the diameter by 10 to the second power, or 100, which equals 1.68 inches times 100, or 168 inches. This is the same as 14 feet. To show how long 14 feet are, you can use a second tape measure, as long as you have enough room. Finally, you can place the golf ball next to the two tape measures to show visually differences of one and two orders of magnitude. The remainder of the orders of magnitude activity involves a series of exercises that learners can perform by themselves, in pairs, or in small groups. In part one, learners are asked the question, how much larger in diameter is a human hair compared to a single-walled carbon nanotube? Another way to phrase this is, by how many orders of magnitude is a human hair larger than a single-walled carbon nanotube? On the left is a scanning electron microscope image of a human hair. Using the small scale in the image, you can see that the hair is tens of micrometers or about 100 micrometers in diameter. On the right is a visualization of single-walled carbon nanotubes. Each nanotube is comprised of carbon atoms bonded to one another to form a strong cylindrical structure. The visualization illustrates the bonds that connect carbon atoms located at each intersection. Carbon nanotubes are used in a variety of products ranging from electronics and long-lived batteries to medical devices and composite plastics. Most single-walled carbon nanotubes have a diameter a little larger than one nanometer. A nanometer is 1,000 times, or three orders of magnitude, smaller than a micrometer. Going back to our question, we know that a single-walled carbon nanotube has a diameter of about 1.2 nanometers. 
The diameter of a human hair varies more, but it is usually in the range of 60 to 120 micrometers in diameter. For this example, we will assume that the diameter of a nanotube is 1.2 nanometers and that the diameter of a human hair is 120 micrometers. The first calculation to perform is to match the units for the two diameters. To do this, we could convert the diameter of the nanotube from nanometers to micrometers, or we could convert the diameter of hair from micrometers to nanometers. In this case, the latter conversion is a little easier because we won't end up with a lot of decimal points. So, we take the hair diameter of 120 micrometers, multiply it by 1000 nanometers per micrometer, cancel units, and end up with the diameter of human hair being 120,000 nanometers. Next, we take a ratio of the two diameters. The diameter of the human hair divided by the diameter of the carbon nanotube is equal to 120,000 nanometers divided by 1.2 nanometers, which, after canceling units, equals 100,000. How many orders of magnitude is this? 100,000 is equal to 1 times 10 to the fifth power. The 5 means that the hair is close to 5 orders of magnitude larger than the nanotube. The 1 means that, by this calculation, the human hair is exactly 5 orders of magnitude larger than the single-walled carbon nanotube. So, this is our answer for part 1. Because our diameters are approximations, it is best to say that the hair's diameter is about five orders of magnitude larger than the diameter of the nanotube. In the second part of the activity, learners are asked the question, if a single-walled carbon nanotube had the diameter of a cardboard tube, what would be the diameter of a strand of human hair? The first step is to measure the diameter of a cardboard tube. Using the vernier calipers again, we can measure the diameter of the tube that was inside a roll of toilet paper. The main scale and vernier scale indicate that the diameter is almost exactly 4.2 centimeters. From part one of the activity, we determined that the ratio of the diameter of a human hair to the diameter of a single-walled carbon nanotube is about 100,000. To figure out what the diameter of a very large human hair would be if the diameter of a carbon nanotube was 4.2 centimeters, we set the diameter of the very large hair divided by the diameter of the toilet paper tube equal to the diameter of a normal sized hair divided by the diameter of the nanotube. Rearranging terms, we can set the diameter of the very large hair equal to the ratio of the normal hair diameter to the nanotube diameter multiplied by the diameter of the toilet paper tube. This equals 100,000 times 4.2 centimeters, which, in turn, equals 420,000 centimeters. We can next convert this diameter to more relatable units. To convert to kilometers, we divide 420,000 centimeters by 100 centimeters per meter, and also by 1,000 meters per kilometer. After canceling units, this shows that the very large hair would have a diameter of 4.2 kilometers if a single-walled carbon nanotube were the size of a toilet paper tube. To convert this answer to miles, we divide 4.2 kilometers by the conversion factor of 1.609 kilometers per mile to yield an answer, after canceling units, of 2.6 miles. To visualize these orders of magnitude differences, we can find natural features or man-made structures that are close to 4.2 kilometers in size. So, if a single-walled carbon nanotube with a diameter of 1.2 nanometers were scaled up to have the same diameter as a toilet paper tube, 4.2 centimeters, then a human hair that originally had a diameter of 120 micrometers would be close to the width of Manhattan at its widest, 4.8 kilometers when it was scaled up the same amount. That's a big hair! A similar comparison could be made to the Golden Gate Bridge. The scaled up diameter of the very large hair would be about one and a half times the length of the bridge. Not all learners have been to New York City or San Francisco, so another way to comprehend these order of magnitude differences 
is to use the website freemaptools, all one word, dot com. To use the site for this activity, click on the Radius Around Point link on the main page. This takes you to another page. Here, in the Search for Location box, you can enter your current location or any other location you might be interested in. For this example, I will enter the University of Minnesota. When you hit Search, you are taken to a closer view of your location. The next step is to move down the page and enter the diameter of the very large hair in kilometers, 4.2 in our example, into the kilometers box next to radius distance. Then you can move up to the map and click as precisely as you can on your exact location. The site will then draw a circle on the map that has a radius equal to the diameter of the very large hair. Using this circle, learners can find locations that are the same distance from the location selected as the diameter of the large hair. In the example, I zoom in on the map and move the center of the circle to my exact location in the Mayo building on the University of Minnesota campus before zooming back out. On the map, I find that the diameter of the big hair is about the same distance as my office is from Target Field on the far side of downtown Minneapolis, where the Minnesota Twins play, or from the Lowry Hill Tunnel where traffic slows down during rush hour on my ride home. It's a little farther than the distance to the Lake Street Bridge over the Mississippi River south of campus. Going eastward, 4.2 kilometers would put me in the middle of the state fairgrounds in St. Paul. Using well-known geographical features or structures, or maps like on the website, and comparing to common objects like a toilet paper tube, is a good way to gain a better sense of the orders of magnitude differences between small objects and much smaller nanoscale materials. The notion of placing approximately 100,000 toilet paper tubes side by side in a straight line across Manhattan reinforces how small a carbon nanotube is relative to a human hair. The question for learners in part three is, how many titanium dioxide nanoparticles would need to be placed side by side in order to span the diameter of a sports ball? This can be answered by determining how many orders of magnitude larger a sports ball is relative to the nanoparticles. This is an image of an agglomerate of individual titanium dioxide nanoparticles. TiO2 nanoparticles are used as whiteners in paints and cosmetics for their ability to absorb ultraviolet radiation in sunscreens and for their antimicrobial properties in a variety of products. The primary individual particles in the image have dimensions on the order of 20 to 25 nanometers. We will refer to this dimension as a diameter, even though most of the individual nanoparticles are not spheres. We will assume that titanium dioxide nanoparticles have a diameter of 20 nanometers. A basketball will be our sports ball in this example. It is difficult to measure the diameter of a basketball directly. One way to do this is to recall that a circumference of a sphere is equal to pi times the diameter of the sphere. Rearranged, this means that the diameter of our ball is equal to its circumference divided by pi. To measure the basketball circumference, we can wrap a string around the circumference of the ball, keep track of the location on the string where it completes one circumference, and measure that distance with a tape measure. Using this procedure, we measured a circumference of 29.2 inches for our basketball. Applying the formula, the ball's diameter is equal to 29.2 inches divided by pi, approximately 3.14, which equals 9.30 inches. To convert this to the metric system, we multiply by a factor of 2.54 centimeters per inch and cancel units, leading to a result of 23.6 centimeters. The next step is to match the units for the diameter of the basketball to the units for the titanium dioxide nanoparticle diameter. To do this, we divide the basketball's diameter of 23.6 centimeters by 100 centimeters per meter and multiply it by 1 billion nine zeros, nanometers per meter. 
After canceling units, we have a basketball diameter of 236 million nanometers. We take a ratio of the two diameters by dividing the basketball's diameter by the nanoparticle diameter. This is 236 million nanometers divided by 20 nanometers, which equals 11,800,000 after canceling units. This is our answer. The number of titanium dioxide nanoparticles that would need to be placed side by side in a straight line to span the diameter of a basketball. How many orders of magnitude is this? In scientific notation, 11,800,000 is equal to 1.18 times 10 to the seventh power. The 7 is important because it tells us that the basketball is a little more than 7 orders of magnitude larger than the nanoparticles. For the final part of this hands-on activity, learners considered the question, if each individual titanium dioxide nanoparticle was scaled up to have the same diameter as a sports ball, what would be the scaled up diameter of a sports ball? In this example, we will answer the question using our basketball. From part 3, we know that the diameter of our basketball is 23.6 centimeters. We also know that the ratio of the basketball's diameter to the diameter of a titanium dioxide nanoparticle is about 11,800,000. To determine what the diameter of a very large scaled up basketball would be if the diameter of the titanium dioxide nanoparticles was 23.6 centimeters, we set the diameter of the scaled up basketball divided by the diameter of the normal basketball equal to the diameter of a normal basketball divided by the diameter of the nanoparticles. Rearranging terms, the diameter of the very large basketball is equal to the ratio of the normal basketball's diameter to the nanoparticle diameter multiplied by the normal basketball's diameter. When we substitute our values, we get 11,800,000 times 23.6 centimeters, which equals 278 million centimeters. To convert to kilometers, we divide 278 million centimeters by 100 centimeters per meter and by 1,000 meters per kilometer. We cancel units and we're left with a diameter of 2,780 kilometers for our scaled up basketball. When we divide this answer by a factor of 1.609 kilometers per mile, we find that the scaled up basketball's diameter is 1,730 miles. Thus, if a titanium dioxide nanoparticle with a diameter of 20 nanometers were scaled up to have the same diameter as our basketball, 23.6 centimeters, then our basketball would have a diameter of 2,780 kilometers when it was scaled up in size equivalently. How do we make sense of these orders of magnitude differences? One way is to compare the size of our very large basketball to another very large spherical object. If we compare this very large basketball to the moon, we find that it is only a little smaller. The moon has a diameter of 3,470 kilometers. Just like it would take 11,800,000 titanium dioxide nanoparticles to span the diameter of a basketball, it would take a similar number of normal-sized basketballs to span the diameter of the moon. We can also look at the website freemaptools.com again to help make sense of these size differences. Once more, I will click on the Radius Around Point link on the main page, and afterwards enter University of Minnesota in the search for location box on the subsequent page. Upon hitting search and moving down the page, I enter 2780 in the kilometers box next to radius distance. I move up to the map, click near my location on the University of Minnesota campus, zoom in on the map, and move the center of the circle to my exact location in the Mayo building. Once I zoom back out, I find that the diameter of the scaled-up basketball is larger than the distance from Minneapolis to any part of Hudson Bay toward the north. Toward the west, the diameter is larger than the distance from Minneapolis to any point on the west coast of the U.S. To the south, the basketball would stretch almost to the tip of the Baja Peninsula and almost to Mexico City. 
and it would bisect the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. To the east, the scaled-up basketball would reach from Minneapolis to Newfoundland. Clearly, seven orders of magnitude is a large difference in size. Lining up normal basketballs in a straight line from Minneapolis to the outskirts of Mexico City would take a lot of basketballs. So would lining up titanium dioxide nanoparticles across the diameter of a basketball. Thank you for viewing this video on the orders of magnitude hands-on activity developed by the METFAST program. Written guides to this activity for both instructors and learners will be available by the end of 2014 on the website nanolink.org, which is run by Dakota County Technical College. This site, which provides nanotechnology-related education and training materials for instructors, requires a free registration. You can also contact me at prainer at umn.edu to receive these guides.